Hey again, it's Christopher from Carswell's Customs. I'm out in the barn today and it's December, so a little chilly, but I had to get back on the uh, 8.1. If you recall, we were looking at cylinder number five and taking a look at why we didn't have compression. We'll do the uh, cylinder head damage reveal after we get these last few bolts out. I forgot the uh, wire on the back. Perfect. Yeah, it's going to stay there. Yeah, here we go again. Alright, so we're taking a look here inside the cylinders and too scored. Doesn't appear to have any head gasket failure that I can see. The engine had 98,000 miles, so shouldn't show too much wear at all. Well, it doesn't look too bad. We'll get some head gaskets on the way and see if we can figure out it with the cylinder head. Alright, so the exhaust valves do look kind of white here. And this cylinder here, number 5, is the one that wasn't holding air when we pressed compressed air into it. You can tell by the air hose that this is the one I ended with. I don't see anything really that stands out. So let's just pull them apart, disassemble the valves, and see what... Uh, See what the valve seats look like. Alright, so let's pull this cylinder head apart, get these valves out, um, keepers, and springs. For cylinder head work, my favorite cigar here is the Flor de las Antilles. And so, yeah, I've probably butchered that name, but these are perfect cigars. So, this is just my, my personal thing. I don't have any deals going with cigar companies or anything but okay so All right, so this is the cylinder here, number five, that had the most um, air escaping or blowing through uh, the intake valve when uh, we had compressed the cylinder to hold the valves in to do the original uh, valve spring change. And I'm gonna just kinda wipe this down and see if there's any damage to the valve seat. I think I can see some already, but we'll zoom in here real quick. Alright, so the valve doesn't look terrible, but there are some 
beat up pitting marks. I don't know if you can make it out here on the camera or not, but the valve doesn't look too bad, but right here in this spot here, the valve itself shows some pitting, some beat up marks on it. Even though the uh, looks like the it was seating pretty good, uh, but it wasn't just wasn't sealing the best. All right, we're gonna come in on the valve seat here. And back here, you can see that there is some slight corrosion. You can barely make it out, but yeah, the uh, there is some pitting on the seat there. And there is some pitting around this area too in the seat itself. So that is, I would say, with pretty high confidence, the uh, the reason why the air was, the compressed air was blown back out through the um, intake port um, and the previous video or the previous uh, segment. So, well, it looks like we're going to need to have the uh, valves and seats ground. So, we'll go ahead and ship these off to the machine shop. So I don't know about everybody else, but when I've got to replace parts on an engine, I usually try to upgrade them or use high performance parts to get some more uh, horsepower torque out of uh, all the engines I play with and build. So it kind of got me to thinking, since cylinder heads are so expensive for this thing, how do we improve the, uh, um, the factory castings and, um, and maybe even the valves? And so researching in David Vizard's books, his big block Chevy books, talked a little bit about the 2.3 inch intake valve. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. This is a single valve I bought to see if it's possible to put 2.3s in this cylinder head. You can see there's a little bit of overlap here from the valve to the, the head, head cylinder head itself. But I think this is worth taking to my cylinder head shop and seeing if I could have my seats cut for a 2.3 inch uh, stainless intake valve. So here's a view of the stock intake valve number five and the stainless valve um, that I purchased for this uh, experiment. And the dimensions are quite similar. There is some differences though. Um, one of them, and this is a very unofficial <laughs> tool to measure uh, valve length, but you can see that the stock valve, at least on my imperfect table and in my imperfect world, it is a bit taller than the Manly 2.3, but we can make up a little bit of difference by using different length push rods. So, I think this might be an experiment that's worth uh, investigating. If you guys want to get a jump on me and uh, try to set this up before I do, this is the uh, part number for the uh, uh, stainless steel valves. Um, this one I ordered here. So, anyway. That'll be a good little investigation as we go forward. Okay, since we're going to take some time and investigate whether or not these cylinder heads will take a bigger intake valve, then let's take a look at what kind of porting options we have. Now I do have another porting video um, that you can find and I'm going to apply the same um, philosophy or techniques to it. Uh, to the LS head as I do to this big block Chevrolet head um, But let's take a look in here first see what's up Kind of hard to get some good light in here, but you can see from the uh, From the outside here the roof does come down quite a bit into the intake port up on top here Okay, this is a pretty this is a much better view with this little flashlight here but as you can see in the cylinder intake port in here is a large bump that's cast into the head. We look on top, right? And so that's because of this threaded um, 
rocker arm stud. So you need some meat in there to, uh, to, to maintain the threads. But for the spring pressures that we're going to run, I'm not so sure that I need all of that big, that big bump to come in and reduce our flow here. So lucky for us, this is a used set of heads. And we can look in here into this threaded boss. And we can see how far we, we actually are... Uh, rocker studs go into the cylinder head so you can see some like carbon underneath the threads you know deep in there so we can bring that cylinder head roof uh, the intake port roof up to that black part right and we won't compromise any of our uh, threads um, in this um, rocker arm boss so that's going to be a, a priority is to to knock that bump out of there looking on this uh this wall, there's quite a, it's a nice sweeping flow um, into the into the valve throat and on the floor of the intake port. So I'm not sure that that's going to require a whole lot of work. And then on the side of the port, same side, all the way in it, the casting's pretty, pretty good, I would say, for like a stock casting, considering older big block cylinder heads, um, you know, factory ones. So... I think there's something to work with here. So, and then deep in there is the is the valve valve guide boss uh, as well. But we could probably clean this thing up and get some flow out of it. So let's have this thing flowed uh, stock, and then um, do some porting to it and see what uh, a little bit of hot rodding can do to this uh, 8.1 cylinder head. All right. So let's take a look in through this side now. You can see the transition is pretty good. It goes from the from the port itself to the bowl. I mean, the transition's pretty nice. There might be a little bit of meat you could take out on this side over here, just to smooth things up. And the bowl almost comes out to uh, the valve seat, which is pretty nice. You wouldn't have to do too much work to that either. Let's see if I can get that light back there. So I, I think that there is some smoothness and there is some opportunities here to uh, to improve flow. Uh, the design seems to be pretty darn good. So let's just let's work this thing and uh, see what we can get out of it here. Okay, so finishing disassembling the uh, cylinder heads, had a couple of the uh, studs break off, and so if the studs don't come out with the impact wrench uh, when I'm pulling the exhaust manifolds off, I'll just roll a nut on there and and clean up the bolt and weld it anyway uh, just because I've got the welder out already I may as well you know put it to use and try to make save a little bit of time uh, by the way I bought this summit welder probably two or three years ago like four or five hundred bucks converted it to gas instead of the uh, um, flux core or whatever and it's been a great little welder it's perfect for the price so now that these are all t um, disassembled and the studs are taken out got the other one over here go ahead and get those to the machine shop and uh, try to get that bigger valve put in and get uh, new uh, valve seats machined in so so yeah the trucks getting torn down quite a ways here uh, the next video will I'm going to address the um, cam cam gear here and uh, see if I can't create a pickup signal on the stock uh, timing gear that will work with the uh, electronic fuel injection so yep good stuff then we'll have a supercharger video on the, uh, the charger here pretty soon too uh, by the way I airbrushed with that fire it's not a uh, not a sticker so probably in the summer we'll do another video on that too so Stick around, got some cool stuff on, on the way. See ya.